you are looking at a molecule of norepinephrine, or it's also sold under the brand name of levofed, which is much easier to say. Norepinephrine is the kind of neurotransmitter called a catecholamine, which facilitates the shock or the fight or flight response. That puts your sympathetic nervous system into overdrive. One of the things it does is increase your heart rate, but for our purposes, it gets more interesting because it has the effect of stimulating the smooth muscle right here around the arteries to contract, which squeezes that artery to a smaller diameter, and that raises the blood pressure. Who can give Levofed? You might be from a different service or different jurisdiction or different state or even country watching this, so you need to check with your local protocols. But the level of license required to give norepinephrine or levofed here is paramedic level or above. The reasons why we would consider using levofed primarily, it's to correct hypotension. It might be shock, it might be septic shock, but for some reason we're trying to get that blood pressure off by using that peripheral vascular squeeze on the arteries and to a lesser extent on the veins in order to get the blood pressure up. We do not use it for hypotension if the hypotension is believed to be from hypovolemia. If you squeeze on this artery and the fluid level is low, squeezing is not going to increase the pressure. You need to first fix the fluid level before the squeeze is going to have any effect. In Lifestar EMS protocols, it does allow us to start levofed even if there's hypovolemia, if we're immediately trying to correct the hypovolemia as well. So you can start the levofed and then start running fluids in that order if that's the best way to rescue the situation, but you don't use levofed to fix hypovolemia if you're not fixing the fluid problem as well. You also should be cautious in patients that are hypercarbic, meaning their end tidal CO2 is way high. The normal range, 35 to 45 millimeters of mercury. If you have a patient that's 60, 70, 80 millimeters of mercury or above in their end tidal CO2 readings, you should probably use caution with levofed. It can lead to arrhythmias like VTAC or VFib. Side effects on the cardiovascular side, you might see some bradycardia as a result of administering levofed. You might see arrhythmias, both the severe ones I just mentioned, as well as a patient might go in and out of AFib or other kinds of arrhythmias because of the beta effect that it's having on the heart. You might notice some peripheral ischemia as well. As the arteries and veins contract, you might have shunting in the body, which moves the blood away from the extremities to the core, so their hands and their feet get cold. You might even notice some color change in the hands and feet because of this peripheral ischemia. On the respiratory side, uh, basically the primary side effect is dyspnea or shortness of breath. Levofed is not friendly with insulin. You should not share a IV catheter or a port or a Y port running levofed and insulin at the same time. Start another line or give it another way. In terms of timing, the onset is very quick. As soon as you start giving it, you should see some sort of effect in one to two minutes. The half-life is about a minute so that when you shut off the levofed, it takes about two minutes before the level drops below the therapeutic level and the effect has worn off. So very quick on and very quick off. So what are the tips and tricks and things you need to know about giving levofed? Because you're going to see peripheral vascular constriction, you're going to find SpO2 on finger probes very difficult to get a reading. You're also going to find it difficult to get non-invasive blood pressure monitoring because of that shunting of blood and because the extremities are so cool and are not getting perfused. Invasive blood pressuring monitoring would be preferred if you're picking up in an ICU or in an ER and you're going to another hospital for a higher level of care. If you can, request an arterial line. They're going to want it at the other end anyways. If blood pressure is that serious a concern that you're running levofed, it's a good thing to have. 
And it's also preferred to give levofed through a central line if you can. Because again, that vasoconstriction in the periphery, having a little IV catheter in a little vein, it can kind of cut off the blood flow to the tissue around it. And the risk is necrosis of the tissue or the tissue around the IV site dying because of poor perfusion. So if you have a central line or you have a choice, go central line with levofed. Two kinds of dosing, the weight-based and the non-weight-based. Again, check your local protocols for the right numbers, but these numbers are pretty standard. The recommendation is to start at 8 to 12 mics per minute and then titrate up or down. You're usually going to titrate down, so a maintenance dose is very typically somewhere between 2 and 4 micrograms a minute. On the weight-based side, for post-cardiac arrest care, the range is usually 0.1 to 0.5 micrograms per kilogram per minute. And then for sepsis, generally the range is 0.01 to 3 micrograms per kilogram per minute. That is a massive range. And the reason for such a wide range is sepsis. Everything gets very, very leaky. You're losing fluids. Uh, you're having vasodilation all over the place. You're having multiple organ failure. And so you may need to run that much levofed in order to keep uh, enough squeeze along with the fluid bolus to keep that pressure to within survival range. How do you give it? You will need to dilute it in D5W, not in normal saline. Normal saline can run the risk of oxidizing the levofed, and you don't want that. So use a bag of D5W instead of normal saline. And the standard dilution would be one bottle in 250 milliliters of D5W. So that's four milligrams in 250. Uh-oh, you saw it coming. We're talking numbers, and that means a little bit of math. How are we going to do the math here? We have two formulas we can choose from that might be appropriate. One is micrograms per minute, and the other is micrograms per kilogram per minute. Fortunately for us at Lifestar EMS, we've all been practicing math on a regular basis, right? Right? Well, let's start with the simpler calculation of micrograms per minute. The micrograms per minute formula starts with the dose, and it has to be expressed in terms of micrograms, times 60 in order to convert minutes to hours, because that's how our pumps work, and the concentration which needs to be expressed in milliliters. How much of this information do we already have and how much do we have to do a little math for? Let's say our starting dose here is going to be 8 mics per minute. Do we know what the concentration is yet? Not yet. That's where we're going to have to do a tiny bit of math. If we put this bottle of Levofed, which has 4 milligrams in it, in a bag of D5W that has 250 milliliters, then we have 4 milligrams into 50, but remember our dose is expressed in micrograms. We're going to have to convert. 4 milligrams is the same thing as saying 4,000 micrograms. So we have 4,000 micrograms in 250 milliliters. 4,000 divided by 250 equals, I'll give you a second to do the math, 16. So our concentration up here, now we know it, is 16 micrograms per milliliter. And now we have everything we need. 8 times 60 is... 480, 480 divided by 16 gets you 30 milliliters per hour. So to start off, we're going to give 8 mics per minute, and we're going to set our pump for 30 milliliters per hour. Now the math for the weight-based dosing, which is micrograms per kilogram per minute, really isn't much harder. You're only adding one element. So let me give you the formula. So the dose again expressed in terms of micrograms 
times the weight of the patient in kilograms, times 60 in order to convert to an hour, divided by concentration. So the only new thing is multiplying by weight. Just for the exercise here, let's say our dose is going to be 0.1. We should always put a zero in front. 0 0.1 mics per kilogram on a patient that weighs 72 kilograms. And the concentration hasn't changed. We put that same bottle of Levofed that had 4 milligrams into a bag of 250, and the concentration, you'll remember, calculated out to 16 micrograms per milliliter. You can go ahead and press pause here and do the math yourself and see if your pump setting is going to match mine. And let's work our way through the formula. So 0 0.1 times 72 is 7.2. Got the first two multiplied. Now we have to multiply by 60. And 7.2 times 60 equals 432. So this top number is 432 divided by the concentration, which is 16. So 432 divided by 16 equals, did you come up with 27 milliliters per hour? It really is that easy. And the hard part isn't the math. The hard part is remembering the formula. And as long as you carry your little reference cards in your pocket or your clipboard or somewhere in your ambulance or wherever you're doing your calculations, it's super easy to do the math. It's also super easy to recalculate on the fly when you decide to make some changes. For example, let's say the hospital hands you a bag of their Levofed and they diluted. Sometimes they do 8 milligrams in 250. So the concentration is no longer 16, now it's 32. Well, we already did our math. All we have to do is change this one number, 32, and divide 432 by 32 in order to get the new milliliters per hour. You decide you want to titrate. Instead of going 0 0.1, you can just change my dose. Now I'm going to go to 0 0.2 and increase my Levofed and recalculate again. So as long as you have that formula, the rest really is easy peasy. All right, does it seem like we went over a lot of information? Let's summarize the most important facts. First, norepinephrine is a naturally occurring catecholamine neurotransmitter that has alpha adrenergic effects on the peripheral vascular system. Oh, you wanted that in English. Okay. Norepinephrine makes arteries squeeze, and that raises blood pressure. And that's a handy tool for us to have in the ambulance. If there's nothing left to squeeze because your fluid levels are low, replace the fluids first. That way, when the arteries squeeze, they'll have something in there to raise the pressure of. Putting norepinephrine into central lines is a better strategy because central lines are in larger blood vessels. The problem with putting it in smaller blood vessels is when it goes into the arterioles and it gets into the tissue surrounding those small vessels, it can lower the perfusion of that area and that can lead to necrosis. The tissue can die because the blood is not reaching that tissue through the little vessels. So big vessels good, little vessels bad. We know that norepinephrine doesn't play well with insulin, so try not to mix them in the same IV line. And finally, practice your math. Carry this little reference guide or some other similar reference guide that has the formulas right there, because if you have the formula in front of you, it's so easy to just plug the numbers in. You might have to convert a unit here or there, but if you have this in your pocket, you're halfway to getting everything calculated. Keep practicing that math, keep watching these videos, and I thank you for joining me. I'll see you on the next one.